Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, March 27th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, the secrets behind the DEA sex parties and media outlets continue to lie about InfoWars coverage of Operation Jade Helm. Let's go back to the club. Characterization didn't sit well with a far right radio host uh -huh. Austin, who told his listeners that he had access to the secret document no, that details a federal takeover in Texas. You're a fat liar. Libertarian website. Well, this Jade Helm story has gone completely viral. That's how you know that we are over the target. People can sense that something isn't right, and that's why this story has been forced into the mainstream. Uh, different outlets are covering it in different ways. We've got the Daily Mail, which is based out of the UK. Uh, they do a lot of really great reporting there, and they did a fair job covering this massive military training exercise. They explain what it is. They actually source where the information came from. They give Infowars some credit. And even at the bottom of the article, you will see a, an embedded video with Alex Jones breaking it down. That's quite the contrary to how Fox News covered this story. Fox News decided that they would cover the Jade Helm military exercise, but they did a total whitewash. They refused to identify Alex Jones or InfoWars by name, and they just gave it a quick little minute and a half sort of, oh yeah, this is happening, but oh, don't even worry about it. Here's a clip. The goal is to see if groups of these special forces can move around the civilian population without being noticed, you know, blend in so they can place themselves in strategic positions to handle different threat scenarios. The military says these are vital skills when it comes to an ever-changing threat. But in the slideshow of the training exercise, it says Texas will be simulated hostile territory. While that hostile characterization didn't sit well with a far-right radio host in Austin, so they gave it about a minute there on the Kelly file so they can say, we covered the exercise. We told you there was going to be a massive military training exercise. But of course, they said it sort of tongue in cheek. You know, oh, it's just the military. They want to see if they can blend in with the civilian population. No big deal. Mint Press News also covered it. And I actually like a lot of the reporting that they that they do as well. But their article is titled The Truth Behind Jade Helm 1-5, they say the conspiracy theories probably aren't as interesting as the truth, and they actually break down the military jargon there. They go on to sort of explain exactly what's happening with the drill, uh, but then they say, so America's special forces will most likely have to evade capture by local law enforcement, suspicious citizens, and whatever military unit is turned loose to try to catch them. So here they're basically spelling it out. They're going to be in your neighborhoods. You're gonna get a lot of suspicious activity calls. You're gonna see a lot of military helicopters picking people up, dropping people off. If they find some sniper hiding in your land. Uh, and then they go on, they say, well, why the big secret? These training exercises are not discussed because America's most elite units will most likely be committing a slew of minor crimes along the way. They will certainly trespass, They'll engage in petty theft, sneak onto trains, hide in the back of an 18-wheeler, and they might even steal a car. This training is absolutely necessary for these troops' survival in extreme situations. However, the public reaction to the above wouldn't be favorable. You think? And so this is why we think it's really important that people, especially in states like Texas, where everyone's got a gun at home, should probably be aware of the fact that there is a huge training exercise going on. What happens if they decide to steal the wrong car? Is that part of the military drill as well? That, you know, if someone decides to shoot at one of these soldiers, is, is that going to be okay? Is the soldier going to return fire? Is that not part of the drill? So here you see in states like Texas and Utah where they're listed as hostile, I mean, are, the, are they gonna have live ammo rounds just in case they have to be dealing with these hostile territories? So forgive us if we think it's important that the military is training in civilian areas. Forgive us if we think that this is odd. And of course, they're also working alongside local law enforcement. That's a big issue. They would love to see the law enforcement 
be federalized and everything be under the umbrella of the Department of Homeland Security. Of course, the states then wouldn't be in control. It would be whoever is the commander in chief. Let's hope he's not a tyrannical dictator coming up in the next election. Now, Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson put together an extensive report. It's called uh, Beyond Denial, Preparations for Martial Law in America. It's very important. Make sure you share that with everyone. It goes on to list everything from the government documents. And this isn't something that we're making up. We're not saying that martial law is set to hit the country July 15th. We're saying these are preparations for what is coming to America. It's been heavily documented for decades. Alex Jones has been covering this for decades. And we really take it for granted here in America that we don't have a permanent military presence. But the way that our leaders have been provoking nuclear war with Russia and we're worrying about the dollar devaluing with China taking over and the way they've been really pumping out this rhetoric from the military industrial complex, you know, we might, things could change here soon. We might have a permanent military presence and that's all we're saying is that they have been prepping America for this. So that is a very important article. Be sure to share that with all of your contacts. It has all those government documents that you need to just let people know that, that this is something that's legit. Coming up after the show, after the interview, Joe Biggs has a response to all of the Jade Helm haters. And again, he was the one that brought this article here to InfoWars. But not only is this a message to the military, to law enforcement, but it's also a message to Americans. Wake up. We have people who are actively signing petitions to get mandatory vaccines. As well, there are people petitioning to get a, a reporter fired for simply showing her bias toward the Constitution. So this is what we're having to deal with. All of that is coming right up. The good news is, is that we do have some good guys on the inside. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit suit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Jakari Jackson here for InfoWars.com. Now I've reported on a lot of gun stories and I guess my unique position here at InfoWars allows me to be simultaneously a reporter as well as a pundit. But some people take offense to this, not so much my reporting, I'm sure they wouldn't give you their opinion of my reporting if they got a chance. But now we have an article out of guns.com, gun control group petition station to fire pro-gun reporter. And this is the coalition to stop gun violence. They have an issue with one Emily Miller. And the coalition is basically saying that Emily is not a real reporter, she's a pundit because she has pro-gun views. And the group went on to say, 
By the standards of her profession, Emily Miller has no business calling herself a journalist. Miller's crusade against D.C.'s popular, democratically enacted gun laws has been a professional one since the beginning. At this point, the city's residents have no reasonable expectation that she will provide objective, impartial coverage on matters of concern to them. If Miller wishes to behave like a pundit and activist, then WTTG should replace her with a real journalist. Well, first of all, I would like to address this anti-gun group and tell them that, yes, you are allowed to have opinions in the United States of America. Secondly, I would like to address something that they said. Miller's crusade against D.C.'s popular, that's debatable, democratically enacted gun laws has been a professional one since the beginning. Well, this democratically enacted gun law, well, let's uh, explore this, uh, this statement, specifically with the case of D.C. versus Heller. The Supreme Court struck down provisions of the Firearms Control Regulations Act of 1975 as unconstitutional and basically says that you can own a gun in the District of Columbia. And actually, it's my understanding that Ms. Miller became a gun proponent or a Second Amendment proponent, as she likes to call herself, because she realized how difficult it was to get a firearms license in the District of Columbia. And you guys probably recall Adam Kokesh being arrested for having a loaded shotgun. Well, with the Firearms Act of 1975 being deemed unconstitutional, yes, Adam Kokesh could have a loaded firearm in the District of Columbia, just like he could have one here in the state of Texas. So for this group to uh, go out here and espouse these views, saying that this is a democratically enacted gun law, they should probably do their research before trying to get somebody fired. I support you, Emily, and hope that you have a very long career, if not there, someplace else. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 if mainstream media doesn't cover it all up, expect hearings and scandal as the Justice Department is announcing DEA sex parties in Colombia. But it's nothing new. You may remember that a couple dozen Secret Service agents and military men were caught up in a prostitution scandal last month for being, bringing prostitutes back to this hotel as they were preparing for the president's trip there. The DEA incident happened around the same time, not at this location. It's a separate investigation. Senator Susan Collins, the ranking Republican on the Homeland Security Committee, says she was briefed on the DEA probe over two weeks ago, but was asked to keep it quiet until the agents were taken out of Columbia and questioned. The DEA's Office of Professional Responsibility became aware of the DEA's Colombian sex parties in 2010. But the DEA Colombian sex parties had taken place from 2005 to 2008. The Inspector General's office discovered that the DEA didn't fully cooperate with the investigation. The DEA Colombian sex parties were replete with prostitutes provided by Colombian drug cartels and conducted at the DEA's office in Bogota. Three DEA special agents were gifted cash and expensive weapons. Foreign officers alleged that they watched over the DEA's weapons while the DEA officers were enjoying the fringe benefits of being the muscle for a monopolized billion-dollar drug trade behemoth. We see a lot of the big banks caught laundering drug money, and they don't even get in trouble, or they get a tiny fine. 
Yeah, you know, it, it's it's tr- terribly unfortunate that uh, the Department of Justice has taken the position that they're going to just slap the hands of uh, international banks that are very, very aggressively involved in laundering uh, criminal proceeds. Uh, there's plenty of examples, but we take the most recent one, which is HSBC, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank Corporation. It sounds like a faraway bank, but it's not. Uh, second largest bank in the world, based in the U.K., um, but they had 400-plus branches in the United States. They profess to be the world's bank. Uh, they are. And um, they also had quite a a banking and do have quite a banking network in Mexico. And between the New York and the Mexican offices of HSBC, um, by their own admission, uh, they committed a criminal offense in connection with their movement of uh, nearly a billion dollars in drug proceeds for the Sinaloa cartel and uh, the Norte de Valle cartel. Those are the largest in Mexico and in Colombia. Colombia is a major hub for the global sex trafficking network. Allegations of sexual harassment and misconduct are also being uncovered pertaining to the FBI, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, and the U.S. Marshal's Office. John Baum for Infowars.com. Another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. While we are witnessing a time of political upheaval, a staggering economy, wars and rumors of wars everywhere, and in fact, we're even seeing some auspicious signs in the heavens, is there an ancient mystery that lies behind everything that we're witnessing from the rise and fall of the stock market to the rise and fall of nations? Well, my guest today hopes to possibly answer that question. Uh, This is Jonathan Kahn, and he's the author of two New York Times bestseller books. Uh, The first is The Harbinger, and then his new book, The Mystery of the Shemitah. Uh, It predicts a biblical pattern, which indicates that financial collapse may be coming in 2015. So Jonathan, thank you so much for joining the show today. Uh, Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, I've seen uh, some other interviews that you've done. You sort of mentioned that you didn't really want to to write this book, The Mystery of the Shemitah, because you weren't really interested in in setting up uh, predictions and specific dates and things like that. Um, But it sort of builds off your your 2012 best-selling novel, The Harbinger, which was Uh uh, um, a fictional story suggesting that the 9-11 terrorism attack was a divine warning to the United States. So talk to me a little bit about that first novel and then how that uh, leads us to The Mystery of the Shemitah. Yeah, the harbinger is framed in a in a, a story, but it's it's something very real, and it's a mystery that goes back to the last days of ancient Israel, when nine prophetic warnings appear in the land, and they are warning the nation of destruction, and the nation basically ignores them and is destroyed. Now, the the eerie thing or the stunning thing is those same nine harbingers or nine prophetic signs are now reappearing on American soil, starting with 9-11, but they have continued. In fact, since the book came out, they have continued to manifest. They are precise, they are exact, and they are warning that America is now the nation in danger of coming calamity. So that's that's what the harbinger reveals. And from that, one of the mysteries that comes out of that is called the Shemitah. So that's how the, that's how the mystery of the Shemitah began. And then, so so what is the mystery of the Shemitah? And, and has it begun? Yeah, the mystery of the Shemitah is a 3,000-year-old mystery from the Bible that actually lies behind everything from the rise and fall of the economy, the rise and fall of Wall Street, when Wall Street collapses, 
uh, the rise and fall of nations, even the rise of America and what may be the fall of America. This thing is so precise that it, it, as far as I know, it's the only thing in existence that actually gives the exact dates of when things happen down to the hours, down to the seconds. I mean, literally forecasting the exact crashing days of Wall Street. It also is really the key for those who know about end time prophecy. It's also the key. That's also the missing key of things that are happening from Israel to major world events. And so this mystery of the Shemitah has been affecting our lives from the moment we were born, really uh, affecting our, from our bank accounts to world history itself. And uh, we are in a Shemitah year right now. That's one of the reasons I didn't want people to focus on dates. I do give dates, but it's a bigger principle. So this mystery begins uh, actually on Mount Sinai. When the law comes, it's called the law of the Shemitah. And basically to understand it, it's this. Every seven years was a Sabbath year. It's called the Shemitah. And during that year, there was no reaping, no sowing of the land. Everything came to a rest. And on the last day of the Shemitah, the last day was called, in Hebrew, was called Elul 29. That is the, the, the 29th day of the month of Elul. On that day comes a wipeout. All debt is wiped out. All credit's wiped out. All the, the financial accounts are wiped clean. Now, the Shemitah was supposed to be a blessing. But when Israel turned away from God, the Shemitah comes back, not as a blessing, but as a sign of judgment on a nation that has once known God, but now is driving God out of its life. And this ultimately would lead to the destruction of Israel. So the question here is, could this ancient mystery, the Shemitah, still be in effect? Could it be affecting us right now? Could it be a warning with what is happening in America? And the answer, and that's why I wrote the book, The Mystery of the Shemitah, the answer is incredibly yes. It's in effect. It's affecting us. It has affected us. It is affecting us. And I believe it will affect us. And once again, here in 2015, yeah. now in the book, which obviously goes into great detail, we don't have enough time here today to, to cover it all, um, but it talks about the last five great economic crashes in the last 40 years have all lined up with yeah. the Shemitah years as well. And so I'm curious, even with that, could someone have knowledge of this and rig the stock markets um, with that knowledge. We've got an article up uh, uh, on Infowars now talking about um, that the rigging is no longer a conspiracy theory. Like now they're saying, wow, this is actually something that's happening. So, so could that be something else that could be um, exploited? Well, I, I think a few things. I mean, you know, there can be those things and there certainly are people who rig the markets. Um, you know, and yet this this thing has been happening, I mean, for not only the last four years, it's actually been happening since, I mean, the the over a century, you can see it. Um, it is happening so exactly that even if people try to rig the markets, first of all, most of them are not religious or they're not following the Bible, number one. Number two, um, you could not make everything happen down, I mean, to the day and happening so exactly. Most people on Wall Street don't understand the Shemitah. You know, once when I wrote the book, people from Wall Street were contacting me and saying, some of them saying there is a seven year cycle. And, and when I looked, I looked after the book, it actually, they actually are identifying the seven year cycle on the time of the Shemitah, but they have no idea what the Shemitah is. So I'd say it's bigger than that. There are conspiracies, but this is bigger than that. When you look at the last 40 years, then it's uh, the greatest crashes or the, the collapsing of the Wall Street, the long term collapses are the years 1973, 1980, 87, 2000 and 2007. Every single one of them happens on a seven year cycle. That's the Shemitah. Every single one of them happens at the time of the Shemitah. But not only that, if you look at the greatest collapses in world history, I mean, just in modern times, the top three, uh, which is number three is 1937, 1938. That's the year of the Shemitah. Uh, the number two is 2007, 2008, the Great Recession, year of the Shemitah. Number one is the Depression, greatest year is 1930, 31, year of the Shemitah. Every single one happens in this time period. And it even gets more precise because actually there's a certain time of the year when this, these things have to collapse. Biblically, the time of the year is called the month of Tishri. That's the, that's the time that actually closes the Shemitah, this seven-year cycle. So it's the, it's the time that manifests this wipeout that comes at the end. Well, if you look at the greatest day crashes in Wall Street history, the amazing thing is the majority of them all happen at the same time of year. They happen in the, at the time of the month of Tishri. That's why for years, economists have been boggled why do all these great crashes happen around September, October? Well, that's the biblical month of Tishri. But it even gets more like intense and stunning because 
you look at the last two cycles, which is 2001 and 2007, the amazing thing is this, this phenomenon, or actually 2008, this phenomenon is getting more and more precise and more and more powerful or stunning. For example, 2001, you have 9-11 happens. You have, it causes the greatest point crash in world history. Well, when does that take place? It's September 17, 2001. That's the greatest crash. What day is that? That date is Elul 29, the exact day of the Shemitah that comes once every seven years. That's the day appointed to wipe out the financial realm in the Bible, the exact day, and it's a sign of judgment. If you go seven years into the future and you find you have the other greatest crash in world history to this day, September 29, 2008, greatest crash ever. When does that take place? On September 29th, and the biblical calendar, it's Elul 29, the exact same biblical day that comes once every seven years. So the two greatest crashes in world history each happen exactly seven biblical years apart, down to the day, down to the hour, the minute, the second, on the day that's appointed once in seven years to wipe out the financial realm. So, I mean, this is stunning. I don't believe, no matter what, anybody could have put this thing together. I mean, that's how precise it is down to the day and down to the seconds. Right. Well, I mean, I've definitely, just from my own experience reading the Bible, I've, I've, I've noticed how, you know, we still sort of see that with our banking. You have bankruptcies clear themselves after seven years. Your credit report, you know, bad things on your credit seem to be wiped away after a seven-year period. So we yeah. see this is still something that's been in play for, for a long time. Now, you mentioned that it's su supposed to be a blessing to wipe yeah. away this debt. Yeah. But here, when we see these... Yeah economic crashes, who is yeah. benefiting from that? Yeah, well, that's, you know, it, it is, there's two sides. That's right. There are two sides to the Shemitah. It's supposed to be a blessing and a nation that follows God, there's a blessing. But if a nation that has known God like America, which is very, very much a parallel to Israel, turns away from God, the Shemitah turns and becomes a sign of judgment, actually comes by force. So yeah, you have, instead of a, a, a good wiping away of debts, you have crashes, you have recessions, you have all these things. But the thing is even bigger because not only does this affect the economy, but this actually determines the rising and the falling of nations. And that's why it's very significant with America, because if you look at the, you know, the word Shemitah in Hebrew can mean the shaking or the fall or the collapse. Well, one of the years of the Shemitah was 1917. That year is a year of a great, I mean, cataclysmic global shaking, World War I, the greatest shaking to that day. At, that's the turning point year. That's the year that America enters the war, begins its rise to superpower. You watch, you know, at this time, you've got the collapse of kingdoms, collapse of empires during the time of the Shemitah, and you have the rise of America. Well, if you fast forward four Shemitahs or 28 years, it takes you to the Shemitah of 1945, another global cataclysm, another world shaking. In fact, the, the conflict actually begins in 1938 with, a, with Hitler seizing Europe. It actually is, that's the, 1938 is the year of the Shemitah. It, every, the war follows the cycle of the Shemitah. It, the Shemitah ends 1945, first week of September. The wor World War II ends the same week. It ushers in the collapse of power and the rise of power, the rise of America to superpower, the Cold War, new economic world order, everything. So, I mean, and actually this is followed down, even the year 2001, year of the Shemitah, actually means shaking. And when you when the Shemitah reaches its greatest, uh, its last week, that's the week heading to that wipeout day. Well, you've got 9-11 comes in. You literally have, you know, Shemitah can mean the fall or the collapse. You literally have the fall or the collapse of towers representing America's glory. This is a warning in the Bible of, you know, the, if the, you know, the there's a, a thing in the book called the mystery of the towers. And one of the things is that the rising of towers actually links to the rise of power. What does the fall of towers foreshadow of? All these things are coming together. And the warning of the Shemitah is if a nation drives away God, the God of its blessings, those blessings will end and the American age will end as we know it. And we are, again, in one right now. And so you're saying that, that <clears throat> the seventh, uh, the Shemitah year has begun now. So has anything yeah. come about this year that yeah. you've seen? Yeah, well, one thing, a few things. First of all, the when the Shemitah began, I mean, we're right now in the center of it. And again, I'm not, you know, Leanne, one of the things is why I want to be careful. I don't want people setting dates. Nothing has to, you know, we can't put God in a box. Nothing has to happen every time. However, 
in view of what has happened, I would be aware of it. First of all, a very major thing happened that escaped most people. The Shemitah began in, in the autumn of, of, of 2014, and what happened is within two weeks, well, actually within one week of it beginning, and remember the Shemitah can mean the fall, within one week, America was overtaken, Russia became the greatest, uh, actually the, the top super um, uh, nuclear power on Earth. It actually surpassed it the first week of the Shemitah. The second week of the Shemitah so came something even more major, and that is that the American age that began in the year 1871, when we became the strongest economic power on Earth, came to an end. America was dethroned as the Shemitah began. It is now China has taken the crown of America. Now, I've warned for since the Harbinger came out, I've warned that if we don't turn back to God, there is going to be the crown that America has worn as the head of nations is going to be removed. We are seeing the beginning of that right now. And so we are watching actually when, when the, um, the same week that the Shemitah began, Wall Street went crazy for about a month. Now, the, the pattern of the, the last Shemitahs have been that often at the beginning of the Shemitah, you don't notice anything, but there are often foreshadows. Well, the major thing, if something's going to happen, the major period is going to be uh, coming up is at the, always at the end of the Shemitah as we approach September. That's the time of that wipeout. I'm not saying it has to happen, but I believe we need to be aware of it. And interesting, people who look, you know, look at signs, um, they're, one of the signs in the Bible of judgment is the darkening of the sun or an eclipse. Not that it always is, but it can be. On the day that we get to the wipeout day, Elul 29 of this Shemitah cycle, the sun's going to be darkened at that time. That, the last time that happened was 1987, when the, the sun was darkened at, the, at Elul 29. It led into Black Monday, the worst day crash in world history. Um, I believe we are going to watch, if we don't turn back, if this nation keeps on going on its course, we're going to watch the fall of America or the shaking of America. And the American age that you and I and, every, and all our listeners have known since we were born is going to come to an end. And the Shemitah is very exact, very precise. And I believe this is a real warning that we need to be ready. Right. And I know a lot of our audience uh, was pretty interested in the fact that there there was uh, this phenomenon. Um, you know, it's not super rare, but with all of the blood moons and the yeah. and the uh, solar yeah. eclipses and everything, and they were coinciding with Jewish holidays. And so is that something that's very significant for you as well? Yeah, well, interesting. I mean, yeah, not to, and I know Mark Biltz, who, who is the one who came up with the blood moon uh, theory. Well, yeah, not that we want to be dogmatic again, that it has to, but I believe it's significant to watch for. For instance, the majority of the blood moon period is the year of the Shemitah. That's the majority of it. And when it comes to a head, guess when it comes to a head? It's September 2015, which is that same key period of the Shemitah. But the other thing is, one of the things that people don't realize when uh, they look at end time prophecy is one of the most amazing things about end time prophecy has to do with the Shemitah. One of the things I put at the end of the book, it's called the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, and that's this. When you get to every seventh Shemitah, or that's seven times seven, that's 49 years, it ushers in a super Shemitah called, that we know it's called the Jubilee. And the Jubilee, when that happens, uh, there is, everybody is restored to their land. If you lost your land, you lost your inheritance, you lost your ancestral home, on the Jubilee, you return and, to your home and you get that home back. Well, one of the things about end time prophecy, as we're speaking about that, is that is that we know that end time prophecy says that Israel has to be restored to the land and to Jerusalem, which it lost in uh, 2000 years ago. That has to happen. Well, could this mystery of the seventh Shemitah actually give us the exact times when these prophetic events have to happen? And I'll give you just a taste of it. Uh, here it is. The Shemitah or the Jubilee, the seventh Shemitah or the Jubilee, this restoration period has to happen the year after a Shemitah, because it's the 50th year and the, the 49th year or the seventh Shemitah, that's a Shemitah. So here's the thing. If you look at the year 1917, you have the year of the Shemitah. At the end of it would be this prophetic period that begins September 1917 to September 1918. Did anything significant happen with prophecy or restoration? Well, here's the amazing thing. In that exact period, uh, Britain uh, is winning the First World War. The Ottoman Empire crashes. The land of Israel goes to Britain. Britain issues, issues the Balfour Declaration, gives the land back to the Jewish people in the restoration, the Jubilee coming back to the land in the exact time period. And if you count 
Seven Shemitahs later to the next seventh Shemitah, it takes you to the, it gives you the period that, that is 1966 September to 1967 September. Right in the middle of that comes the next prophetic restoration, the Six Day War, when Israel regains Jerusalem. Well, here's the thing I'm not being dogmatic, I'm not saying it has to be, but if we follow this one more time, where does it take us? It takes us to the Shemitah that we're in right now. That's the seventh Shemitah. And the period of prophetic restoration would be September 2015 to September 2016. Now, again, not being dogmatic, but if it follows the pattern of what happened before, it would mean war, war in the Middle East, and a war resulting in a the next piece or puzzle piece of prophecy. So this is so big. I mean, we're talking about from our pocketbooks, our bank accounts, to, our, to America, to prophecy to the end times. So it's, it's very specific. It's very exact. Yeah, very, and we're definitely seeing that happening. Uh, a lot of downplay here. We've got major military exercise going on across America, people prepping. Um, you know, we see the elite are kind of um, building up bases and bunkers in, in New Zealand and countries far away, a lot of civil unrest. So we're sort of seeing the signs, but we're also seeing the signs in the heavens as well. Um, now, what do you suggest people do? Is there something that people should do to prepare yeah. for this? I mean, we're seeing the writing on the wall. Yeah, that's a great question. I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a few quick things. One is, I mean, I'm not a financial analyst, but I would say this. Personally, I would not feel safe putting uh, our, my investment in the stock market at this time, number one. I believe that safety is, is, is wise. I believe it's also wise to have a, uh, a store of, of essentials if, for instance, if things broke down, if, if services broke down, that you'd be okay. I think that's wise anyway. Beyond that, and I'm gonna give you the, really the highest answer is this. When people say, you know, I wanna be, I want safety, you know, what should I do? Should I build a bunker? Well, in Hebrew, the word for safety is Yeshua, and Yeshua is Jesus. So the ultimate thing is this, listen, no matter if you are outside of him, uh, and I'm telling you, I'm Jewish, and I'm telling you that if you're outside of Jesus, there's no safety. The only safety is inside him. And if you're in him and your life is not right in God's will, get it right. Get right today. You know, you don't know how long you have. And what I'm saying here is the time is late. We are witnessing things that we have never witnessed in American history. We're witnessing an apostasy. We're witnessing a moral uh, decay that the Bible gives very clear answers of what happens when, when a nation goes this way. We're witnessing America and Israel, you know, at its worst relationship. We're witnessing all these things happening fast. The time is late. So what I would say is the, there are many wise things to do, but the most important thing is get right with God and you don't have to worry, uh, you don't have to fear because you are in safety, which again in Hebrew is Yeshua and that's Jesus. Wow. Well, Jonathan, where can everyone get your book and, and stay in touch with you? Yeah, thank you, Leon. Um, yeah, the, the Mystery of the Shemitah is available everywhere, for online, offline, from Amazon to Walmart, everywhere. Um, the Harbinger is also available everywhere you look, online or offline. To get in touch, if people want more or to get in touch, and, and this all comes from a lot of other things, so uh, we give out free resources all the time. The, just remember, Hope of the World is the ministry. It's hopeofthe-world.org, and we'll be glad to help you with anything. Well, thank you so much. All very interesting, very thorough book there. Uh, the Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah go hand in hand. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you, Leanne. That's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv where you'll find all of our reports, the nightly news, our movies, rants, and really about 18 years worth of content. And you can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. And of course, your subscription will help out the InfoWars operation. Thank you so much for tuning into the show tonight. We'll see you here Monday, 7 p.m. Central. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans 
Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. I'm Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, U.S. Army retired veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan. Now I'm here today to dismantle the lies, propaganda, and just blatant BS put out by the mainstream media, the Pentagon, all these different sources are just clearly lying about this Operation Jade Helm 1-5. Now first off, I wanna talk about the Army Times. Now in the Army Times it says that Joe Biggs is cited as a veteran of Afghanistan and Iraq and said that exercises would prepare troops to throw citizens in FEMA camps. Um, I'm cited as a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, hello, you guys have written about me before. You can actually go Google my name with Army Times and pull up an article that you yourself did. Hello, you might want to go fact check yourself before you wreck yourself. You guys are supposed to have our backs. I'm a veteran. I actually have a purple heart. Do you know what that is? You obviously don't know what a veteran is. This is a purple heart. So now we're going to talk about the BizPack Review article. It says that that we call this basically a secret document that proved to be bogus, but it hasn't slowed down the storm of conspiracies. Well, if you go back to March 23rd of last week, there's a video where I bring this Jade Helm 1-5 document to Alex. We sit down here at the news desk and we discuss what's going on. And in the video, you can clearly see that it says unclassified. Not once have we said secret document in any video. It's not secret. It's been hiding in plain sight for anyone to find except most people don't know what to look for, and if they did see something like that, they wouldn't know what they were looking at. We get sent by one of our sources, I'll leave it at that, that, hey, this is hidden behind a firewall, but it's unclassified. They're supposed to be releasing this. A little bird just put it on scripts, the big document site. So that's a trick. When something's supposed to be declassified, they'll still hide it. So now for four or five days, they've had the... Different publications, Stars and Stripes, Military.com, and others going, we don't know if the document's real, but these conspiracy theorists, uh, uh, you know, claim that we want to take over Texas and Utah this, this summer and martial law. We're not going to have martial law this summer. You notice how they don't deny the operation, though, whatsoever? They just keep trying to, you know, move the attention away from the fact that that's going on and just keep throwing out the conspiracy term and keep attacking us so it takes people's attention off of the fact that there that there is a mission going to happen just like it says in the documents they're not denying it and then you got contacted by one of your f friends that you served with yeah. saying shut up it's a psyop get you none of your business yeah and that's the reason why it's getting this kind of coverage because there is underlying hidden messages in this document the Pentagon keeps attacking us, coming after us, claiming that we said this is secret. So now we're going to take a look at Fox News. And in their article, it says Pentagon and local law enforcement are trying to knock down the rumors and let everyone know that the feds have no plan to take over Texas. Well, last night on the uh, Kelly file, Megyn Kelly was talking to a reporter out of L.A., Chase Gallagher. While the military says it's just training soldiers for the realities of war, critics say the Army is preparing for modern-day martial law. Trace Gallagher live in our West Coast newsroom with a story. Trace? And they joke back and forth and banter. They would not once mention the fact that Alex Jones or myself or InfoWars broke this story, brought to the attention of the American people. All they did was just call us some conspiracy group out of Austin, Texas, or something like that. This is out of control. They are blatantly lying, saying that we said it was a secret document when we never said that whatsoever. Well, that hostile characterization didn't sit well with a far-right radio host in Austin who told his listeners that he had access to the secret document that details a federal takeover in Texas. A libertarian website also picked up on the plan, and before you know it, rallies were being held against the event. But apparently the so-called secret document was published weeks ago in several local newspapers, letting the public know the training was in the works. Still, the Pentagon and local law enforcement are trying to knock down the rumors trying to let everyone know that the feds have no plans to grab the Lone Star State. Apparently, this kind of stuff just doesn't play very well in Texas.
Now, they refuse to link to our videos. Last night, Alex Jones actually did a video which outlines with proof what is happening, the plan to condition the American public into accepting this military presence on the streets. Now we're gonna look at an article from the Dallas Morning News that says, the U.S. Army Special Operations Command has an upcoming training exercise so covert, there was a press release about it two days ago. Well, first of all, this goes back to the whole thing saying that we said it was secret. We never said it was secret. We showed you the document where it says unclassified. This is where it actually gets interesting. Now it says, despite assurances that the training is to prepare troops for overseas missions, Army documents in the past have made clear that plans for martial law are in place for within the continental United States. Now a leaked 2012 U.S. Army military police training manual entitled Civil Disturbance Operations describes how soldiers would be ordered to confiscate firearms and kill American dissidents. The manual also revealed that prisoners would be detained in temporary internment camps and re-educated to gain a new appreciation of U.S. policies in accordance with, now this is the key part, the U.S. Army FM field manual, in case you don't know what FM is, 3 19.40 internment resettlement operations. Hello, these are the documents that the military is putting out. We link to this kind of information at InfoWars. We don't just make this stuff up. This is what we do. We don't use teleprompters. We actually go out there and do research about what it is that we talk about. Now, it goes on to say that Jade Helm has also drawn comparisons to a 2012 scenario outlined by retired Army Colonel Kevin Benson in which the U.S. military is used to crush an insurgent rebellion overseen by Tea Party militia members who are going to take over a city of Darlington in South Carolina. The exercise is known as Jade Helm 15, and conspiracy theorists believe it is targeting the southwest region of the United States, particularly the state of Texas. The military is denying the conspiracy, and a spokesman for the military said, this exercise is routine training to maintain a high level of readiness for Army Special Operations Forces because they must be ready to support potential missions anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. Army Lieutenant Colonel Mark Lastoria a SOCOM spokesperson says the notion was proposed by a few individuals who are unfamiliar with how and why SOCOM conducts training. Uh, a few individuals who are unfamiliar. In case you forgot, I'm Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, U.S. Army retired. I'm very familiar with these documents. The reason that we broke this is because I saw the underlying meaning behind it. So don't tell me or question my service. I didn't sit there and bleed for my country and watch my friends die so you can tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Now we're gonna go on to the next article by the Houston Chronicle, and it says, plans for a 17-city Army Special Operations exercise in Texas stirred up some ultra right-wing fears of a government takeover in the Lone Star State, but local law enforcement says they've been long aware of this drill. They've only been talking to people within Texas since the beginning of March, so I wouldn't say this is a long time known operation that you guys have had planned, so we'll go ahead and go past that. Now it says training exercise Jade Helm is going to assist our special operations soldiers in refining the skills needed against an ever-changing foreign threat. Well, I don't know if you guys remember when David Knight and I went to AP Hill in Virginia and showed you the training facility that has a church, a mosque, a soccer field, a subway station. Like we've always said, in the military, you train how you fight and you train in an environment similar to the theater of operations that you will go to in combat. So why are these places popping up all over our country? Uh, a foreign threat, it looks more domestic to me. Now it says, among the planned exercises, soldiers will try to operate undetected amongst civilian populations in some towns and cities where residents will be advised to report any suspicious activity. Well guys, guess what, I accept your challenge. I'll be out there in some of those cities in camo myself, trying to find you guys, call you out, call local law enforcement, because I'm gonna be a spotter. You guys remember when you went to sniper school, when the spotter sat up there and you guys shot targets and he tried to find you? That's what we're gonna do. I'm also gonna encourage a lot of my InfoWars uh, listeners out there to go out to these different cities as well and see if you can spot these guys. And let's call in on them. Let's see how good these guys are. Because we don't need a whole bunch of special operations commandos running around dressed in civilian attire, operating civilian vehicles, and also a bunch of guys in ghillie suits moving around through the woods doing God knows what. So, so far, I've covered all the mainstream media lies. Now what I want you to do, I want you to go to Infowars.com. I want you to tell your friends to go there right now and go to the article, Beyond Denial, Preparations for Martial Law in America, where Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones 
lay out all the information over the past few years where it clearly states that the government is ramping up to do these type of missions. Now, Jade Helm 1-5 is something that's probably been in the works for a long time because all this information that you can find in this article is very informative. It'll help give you a background about what this mission really is and what it is that the government's trying to do. Now, finally, I wanna call out all you Pentagon propaganda pushing MSM sites out there. The reason why you guys are afraid to ever link to our information and call us by name is because you know the American people will find out the truth. You guys are all working for the military industrial complex. You guys are all vetted in the military and you guys get paid by these guys to push their BS. I'm an American citizen, I'm a soldier, I'm pissed off and after this video, a lot of American citizens are gonna be pissed off too. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com signing off. Globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Dan Bedondi for the InfoWars Nightly News. In this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade, people were all coming out to brave the cold and the snow just to support the Irish. But can these same people brave the government and their new control grid as they're pushing mandatory vaccines, driverless autonomous cars, and internet neutrality? Mitchell Rally! Do you support the Republican or Democratic Party or neither? Neither. Uh, usually I end up supporting the Democrats. I'm neither at this point in my I'm life. a Democrat right now. Neither. I'm more Republican. I'm actually uh, independent. Democrat. Democrat. Republican. <laughs> um, I like to think I support the Republican also. I tend to lean more Democrat. In 2016, the presidential elections, who would you vote for, Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush or somebody else? Uh, I'd probably vote for somebody else. Well. I really just wish that I was old enough to run for president, but I'm not. Uh, Hillary Clinton. I say Clinton as well. Somebody else. I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I would vote for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Yeah, here too. Hillary Clinton. Oh, Jed Bush. Still, Jerry's still out, but not, not Clinton. Uh, I think I'd rather get all the options first, but as it goes right now, I'd probably go for Hillary. Uh, As of late, the FCC has now taken full control of the internet. Do you think this is just another way for the federal government to control and spy on us, or is it for our safety? Mm, I think it's more of like a big brother kind of thing. I think that net neutrality is extremely important, and it's something that's absolutely necessary. Um, I don't think that there is spying going on with net neutrality. I feel like they're spying on us. But yeah, spying on us, definitely. Absolutely. I don't support that one bit. They're just trying to do things to, to protect us, that's all. Hands down, safety. I'd like to think it's safety also. I think it's overall for our safety. However, I do believe that it may lead to some corruption. I don't know, in my opinion, I think the inner should be off, off limits. 13th Continental Regiment, Infowars.com. And uh, driverless autonomous cars are now being pushed in the UK. Are you aware that the United States is trying to push these cars within the next couple of years? And would you feel safe with these vehicles on the road? Not at all. I would not feel safe at all. 
I'd feel safe as long as I do the research to make sure that the cars are safe and that there's peer-reviewed journal articles showing their safety and that all of that has been uh, regulated and shown to be safe, um, then I'd be perfectly fine with it. I'd give it a couple more years before I feel like entirely safe because it's new technology and stuff like that. This is my first time hearing about it, but right now I don't think it'll be right, but in a few years it'll be a good thing to do. I would not feel safe only because if they're operated by GPS, they're not going to be able to see, uh, you know, pedestrians. No, I would no, not. No, because there's too many gas ass operated cars and they probably don't have control over them and these gas powered cars, if they're going slow, they're going to push them up the road. Uh, I think it would take some time before I feel safe uh, letting someone else have control. If they're 100% tested before they get on the road, I would feel safe, but it would definitely have to go through a lot of testing before I would, I would want to see one of those out there. I don't, I don't feel safe with it. I believe the, the owner, the operator should be fully responsible for w whatever action is taken on the road and you know, being controlled by a robot is something that we should never see in our lifetime. Do you believe vaccines are safe or not? Your thoughts? Yes, I believe they work in most cases. Yeah, I believe the same thing. I believe vaccines are safe. I believe that all children should be vaccinated. Vaccines? I think so. I mean, as long as they're handled carefully, I don't see why not. Yes, they are. Yes, yes, I do. All my children have vaccines. Have been vaccines. I think vaccines now are a lot different than when I was young, and um, they definitely need to be closely monitored. I, I believe vaccines are pretty safe, you know. They've been working for however long, so. Uh, well, I, I, I'd like to think that I follow my do doctor's prescriptions and what they recommend. So if they recommend a vaccine, usually I, I move forward with it after some investigation. Some, 50-50. There's microchips and all this other stuff going on, and I, I don't agree with it at all, not at all. Vaccines are absolutely positively safe. You should get your child vaccinated. The end. Just three days after receiving a flu shot, Mary Sue was paralyzed, diagnosed with a rare disease. So what happened? I can't even read. I used to love to read. I love to sew and crochet. I can't do that now. That flu shot did me in. The flu viruses, they're always changing, and this year, H3N2, that bug changed so much. Researchers have found the vaccine in Canada just isn't working at all. And in fact, if you received a flu shot last year as well, it could actually increase your risk of becoming ill. Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer that could spread across the nation. And Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. In the latest controversial question, do you think vaccination should be made mandatory given a parent no control or choice of their children being vaccinated? Absolutely not. No way. I believe that parents should have the choice. However, I believe that the parents should be sh smart about their decision. They should have a choice because vaccine, vaccines are better for their children. Yep, they are. I used to work at a hospital and I know. Uh, I feel like it's all, it's all up to the parent. If the parent wants their ch children to be, to use that, they should. Yeah, same thing. I believe it's up to the parent what they want to do with their kids. Shouldn't be the government. I believe the parents should always be notified because it's your kid, you know, it's your blood. But uh, mandatory, yeah, I believe so. Absolutely now, not. now, no, absolutely not. Well, I do agree that they are important, but I think that's completely up to the parent. People have their own free will, and I strictly, I, I firmly believe in that. In the case of vaccines, they're safe. And I don't think the parents should be able to choose whether or not vaccines are for right for their child because they are right for their child. Okay. And um, the flu shots, are, are you aware that they contain dimerosol formaldehyde? Yes, I am. Okay. And are you aware that formaldehyde is over the safe amount uh, for the human consumption? Yes, I am. I still got a flu shot. I think the bottom line is our daughter was born normal. She developed normally for the first 18 months of life. Mm -hmm. There were no signs of any underlying genetic disorder. Then she was vaccinated, she became ill.
that illness eventually led to a diagnosis of autism, then later seizures. My name is Sula Tor. This is my daughter, Kimberly. Kimberly is a vaccine injury child. She was nine weeks old when she had her initial shot. How do you convince me? How do you convince the other parents out there that we need to do this? Campbell, I'm going to get it. Yes. If that helps at all, but I'll tell you, my wife is not going to immunize our kids because I've got four of them, and when I go home, I'm not Dr. Oz, I'm Mr. Oz. <laughs> With the federal government bearing down control on our technology, our transportation, and our health, perhaps we may need a little luck of the Irish and the fighting spirit to take back our civil liberties. And this is Dan Bedandi for the InfoWars Nightly News. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.